Proudly, we hail. From New York City, where the American stage begins, here is another program with a cast of outstanding players. Public service time has been made available by this station for your Army and your Air Force to bring you this story as proudly we hail the United States Army. story is entitled Military Mission, how our uniformed men are sent to help guard the ramparts of freedom in two score nations the world over. Our first act curtain will rise in just a moment, but first... What's your interest? Is it radio, photography, motor mechanics, metalwork? Well, if you'd like to learn a highly skilled, well-paid trade like pharmacy, watch repairs, photography, motor mechanics, or electronics, there's no better place to learn than in the United States Army. The Army offers training in dozens of highly specialized jobs, jobs that will pay you well for the rest of your life. Many veterans have already used their Army training and experience to build profitable careers for themselves, out of the skills the Army taught them. You can do the same. Visit your local United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station today. Talk it over and find out what's in it for you when you serve your country as an American soldier. And now your Army and your Air Force present the proudly we hail production, Military Mission. Today, the free world looks to our country for help against the communist world conspiracy and its armed aggressions. That help often takes the form of a military mission. Men representing our armed services assigned to work with the armed forces of friendly nations to help train their military arms to develop deeper friendship among the forces of liberty. Military missions take our men of every rank, perhaps to the chill mountains of northern Greece or the warm plains of Formosa, to the balmy beaches of the Mediterranean, or as in our present story, Sergeant David Martin, United States Army, heads southward in a high-winging passenger plane. Southward across the Gulf of Mexico, southward past the steaming heat of Panama, southward to a Spanish-speaking South American country bordering on the snow-peaked Andes Mountains. <laughs> In the sparkling sunshine of a bright morning, the plane lands and releases its passengers, including Sergeant Martin, combat veteran of Korea, qualified for his new post by special army training, including a knowledge of Spanish. Sergeant Martin stands aside from the other passengers. A tall man with sandy hair, his eyes roving the knots of people around the plane and at the gates. Now he watches a small man in the black alpaca uniform of a chauffeur. Your pardon, Senor Sergeant. It is the Sergeant Martin. Yes, that's right. It's my honor and privilege to welcome you to our country, Senor Sergeant. It's my honor and privilege to make myself known to you. I am Jose, the number one chauffeur of the United States Military Mission. It is my honor and privilege to have an automobile awaiting you at the gate to transport you to the embassy. I'm glad to know you, Jose. We can go as soon as I get my luggage. Uh, Senor Sergeant, I have given the instructions. They will be in the automobile as soon as we are. After you, Jose. Soldado Americano! Never mind those no good people outside the gates, Senor Sergeant. We are almost to the automobile. Americano, go home! Americano, go home! I, it's nothing, Senor Sergeant. American, go home. That's a slogan the communists use all over the world, Jose. I didn't think the commies were so open here in your country. Pay them no attention, Senor Sergeant. Go home, Americano, go home! Senor Sergeant, the automobile. Right. You must forgive we go so slow, Senor Sergeant. 
It's the narrow winding streets of the old city. The sooner I see everything, the better, Jose. Ah, oh, trouble ahead. There's some kind of a street fight. Well, can I go ahead, senor sergeant? There is no room to turn. What's the trouble up there? It appears it does a man or so. A girl, backed against the wall there. Where do you go, senor sergeant? Help her out. You wait here. Amigos, un chico solo doce hombres. Vergüenza, amigo. Coche, americano, americano, you go home. Senorita, vengo conmigo. No, no, leave me alone. Please go. Hey, chico, vamos. Hey, police. There they go. You all right, miss? You must go too, Sergeant, quickly. They were yelling at you for being a friend of us Americans. Is that a crime? Only to a few fanatics, but please... Communists, huh? You're on our side. Good for you. Sergeant, you are in uniform. It is better nobody knows you were in a street fight with communists. I've got a car here. Come on. No, no, that is not discreet. But thank you. Goodbye. <laughs> Senor Coronel Edwards, it's my honor and privilege to bring you the Senor Sergeant Martin. Oh, thank you, Jose. How do you do, Sergeant? Colonel? Let's alter later, Jose. Thank you. Senor Coronel? Your desk is in the next room, Sergeant. You and I are the only members of the military mission to work directly out of the embassy here. The rest of them are at the air base and army training center ten miles outside the city. Yes, sir. First, here's your copy of the directive we operate under. Study it carefully, Sergeant. Yes, sir. You'll see that our mission is to help our host nation build up its army, air force, and navy patrols. We're training officers in strategy and tactics. The use of American weapons, vehicles, machines, it's all set forth there. Colonel, I gather the communist problem here is bad, sir. Yes, it is. The people here, the overwhelming majority, are perfectly sound, but they figure they're so many thousands of miles away from Russia, so what can a few local comrades do? <laughs> Plenty. Yes, of course. Senseless strikes, sabotage, espionage, propaganda. We know all that. The government here knows it. They have to be cautious, so do we. Some commies yelled at me at the airport. Then in the old city, we ran into some brave comrades starting to beat up a girl. Oh? She insisted I leave fast before the police came to avoid publicity for my uniform, she said. Smart girl. Public row between us and the comrades would only add fuel to their asinine propaganda that mm -hmm. we're out for imperialistic control and so forth. Caution's the word, Sergeant. Never forget it. I won't, sir. About my duties as your aide. Well, your first one will be tonight, Sergeant. Attending a reception here at the embassy. Yes, sir. You'll meet everybody, including the ambassador, of course. Many high government officials will be here, their wives, daughters, so forth. Wonderful people, as you'll see. And you'll meet some not so wonderful. Yes, sir. For good public relations, we even have to invite a few communists. The one that'll surely be here tonight is Carlos Sidalo, editor of a commie-inspired weekly paper. Now, no matter how he gets your goat, Sergeant, uh, don't punch him in the nose. <laughs> Mr. Ambassador, the newest member of our military mission, my aide, Sergeant David Martin. Ambassador? Uh, glad to have you aboard, Sergeant. <laughs> the uh, ambassador used to be in the Navy, Sergeant. <laughs> oh, now, don't quote me, gentlemen, but I wish I still were. <laughs> oh, some new guests, sir. You know Mr. Sedano? Uh, good evening, Mr. Sedano. Senor, and you may be gracious enough to remember my sister, Elisa. Why, of course, Miss Sedano. Uh, and our newest arrival, Sergeant Martin. Miss Sedano is a great friend of the United States, Sergeant. She's head of a movement here to have English taught in every school. A great pleasure to meet you, Miss Sedano. I am always happy to meet an American I have not met before, Sergeant Martin. Sit down, Miss Sedano. I love this embassy garden, Sergeant. It is so peaceful. Yes, it is peaceful here. Like it was not in the street this morning. I thank you for catching my hint that we had never met before. My brother would only have asked questions. I don't suppose I ought to ask any. You wonder how I can be a friend of the United States and my brother a communist. 
Of course. Or perhaps you believe I too am a communist, that I only pose as your friend. It would be just the thing they would do. A communist, if I were one, could even have planned that street fight this morning in order to interest you, make you believe I was hated by the communists here. Well, if you don't mind, that's what I did think, except... Yes? Well, except a real comrade would have wanted me to get caught in a public brawl. You didn't. What about your brother? <sighs> Carlos is a passionate idealist. He knows nothing of the real world, tricked by the communists. We come of an old, proud family, Sergeant. The communists use my brother. Many a terrible thing is done in his name, and he will not understand it. He's too gullible for his own good. He believes all the things the communists tell him. You can't convince him? He believes every lie that Moscow tells. Oh, he's really a wonderful person. It's a shame he doesn't know how they're using him. But you and he... Is... Are still friendly? But someday, that is one of the things I hate most about communism. It turns children against parents, brother against sister. It is an evil, corrupt thing, Sergeant Martin, and for it to come to our beautiful, peaceful country. <sighs> Sergeant, do you still suspect I might be one of them? Well, my mother always warned me against believing what a beautiful girl might tell me in a moonlit garden. But... I'd certainly like to believe you. Elisa! Elisa! Carlos! Si, aquí estoy. Nos vamos enseguida. Si, si, enseguida. Well, Sergeant. Hasta la vista, señorita. Congratulations on a nice party, Mr. Ambassador. Yes, all hands seem to enjoy themselves, Colonel, except me. <laughs> Colonel Edwards. Yes, Sergeant? Could I speak to you a moment, sir? Well, you'll excuse me, Mr. Ambassador. Uh, good night, Colonel. What is it, Sergeant? Here in my office, sir. Yes? Oh. This uh, blood on the windowsill? Yes, sir. I came by here right after the last guests had gone. The door was ajar and the lock broken and the safe had been opened. Anything gone? Copy of that directive of our military mission, sir. And you know who'd want that, don't you? Yes, the communists. This is bad. The blood stains are fresh, sir. May I suggest an immediate search of the grounds? Right. Come on. Find anything yet, Sergeant? Some blood stains here on the driveway, sir. Oh, yes, yes, I see. They seem to lead off the embassy grounds across the street. Let's go. Colonel, over here. Jose. Badly knifed. Must have happened at the embassy. He came way out here. Senor Coroner, Senor Sergeant, I saw the thief. In my office? I passed the window. I recognize him as one of those men in the street this morning, Senor Sergeant. Uh -huh. He had a knife. He got away. One of you men, get Dr. Gray here fast. Jose, the doctor's coming. Why did you come this far into this little street? I did not wish to be found on embassy grounds. You would have to... Explain too much to the police. But it is better I am found here. You can say I was hurt by street thieves. Oh, hang on, Jose. Doctor, any second now. Senor Coronel, Senor Sergeant, it was my honor and privilege to. Jose! He's gone, Sergeant. Wonderful little guy. Well, we've got to think about getting that document back. Whoever stole it must have been watching the embassy closely to know when to get into your office. Colonel, about Elisa Sadalo. It was at her suggestion that she and I got out in the garden. And that's when the theft was carried out. What? You think she framed it? I... But with her brother, a leading communist, I wonder if she's the friend of our side after all that she claims to be. <laughs> You are listening to the proudly we hail production, Military Mission. We'll return in just a moment for the second act. Here's a special message to all Army veterans. You are urged to find out about the special enlistment opportunities now available to you. 
You can now enlist directly for the Chemical Corps, Engineers, Infantry, Armor, Ordnance, Army Medical Service, Artillery, Quartermaster, Military Police, Signal, or Transportation Corps, any of those technical services. This is an opening made especially for you and is not available to everybody, only to those of you who have had prior Army service. Of course, you'll have to pass the other qualifications, too, the age limits and the mental and physical examinations. But as an Army vet, you're already acquainted with the high caliber of men who meet the test. And that also applies to the paratroopers. Only you men with prior service in the Airborne are privileged to enlist directly for it now. Get full details about these opportunities today at your local United States Army and United States... You are listening to Proudly We Hail, and now we present the second act of Military Mission. Jose, the chauffeur, murdered by a communist thief. Sergeant Martin's copy of the confidential directive stolen. Both events could lead to trouble for the American policy of friendship with the host nation. The ambassador, Colonel Edwards, and Sergeant Martin consult on what action to take. Now, whatever we do, gentlemen, we have to do fast and quietly. You understand the importance, the grave importance of this incident. I'm sure, Mr. Ambassador, I'm sure we can count on full cooperation from the government and the police. Uh, Sergeant, I understand you're suspicious of Miss Sadala's part in this thing. Her reputation as a friend of ours might be a cover while she actually helps her brother. I hate to think it of a girl like that. For a young man, Sergeant, you're singularly immune to her good looks. Well, not entirely, sir. It seems to me the best move would be to locate her, make sure if she was in on the theft or not. All right with you, Mr. Ambassador? It has to be. Full speed ahead, Sergeant. Sergeant, change to civilian clothes. A city police car is coming for you with a detective named Rojos. Now, this is where Senorita Sadara lives, Sergeant. Apartment on second floor. The light's on, Rojos. You may be home. I will wait here. Right. But I'll yell if I need help. Sergeant, I helped steal documents, commit a murder? You are wrong, wrong. It was done while you and I were in the garden. I see how it looks to you, but it is horrible. We think the directive was stolen to be published by your brother's paper. To make anti-American propaganda. My brother knew nothing of this. How do you know? He is a communist. A deluded fool, but not a thief, not a murderer. Tonight is the night of the week he prepares the paper for publication in the early morning. He must be at his office. Yes, that is right. Okay, I'll pay him a little visit. Wait, I will go with you. There may be trouble. I'm sure he knows nothing of this. But if I can speak to him. You still do not trust me, do you? I don't have to. I'm going to be right with you every second. Let's go. This is the back entrance to Carlos' office. Keep going. Carlos. Elisa, ¿qué pasa? Tengo que hablar contigo. Ah, American sergeant, eh? Why do you bring him here, Elisa? Let us come in, please. Come in. Men outside in front, Carlos. Who are they? The men who distribute the paper at daybreak. They wait for it to come off the press. Carlos, an important paper belonging to the American embassy is missing. Maybe you can help us get it back? It's a copy of the official orders of the American military mission. Why should you come to me about this? Sadalo, we believe it will eventually get to you for publication. But why do you fear its publication? It's going to be published, but not by you fellows. Sergeant, wait. Carlos, that document was stolen from the embassy while we were there. Stolen? And a man was murdered trying to prevent it. What? You lie. You will never believe that your communists are thieves and murderers and worse. I beg you to believe us now. I was not told it was stolen, nor was I told of a murder. It's true, Sadalo. I... I am awaiting now a messenger who brings to me an important document. I, I planned it for our paper tonight, as you guessed. Carlos, are you sure the men outside are only your distributors, your street vendors? Just a moment. Oye, Fernando, ¿qué pasa? Tenemos instrucciones, Carlos. Contra los americanos. Uh-huh. Muy bien. 
you heard, Sergeant. They have orders to make trouble, make a demonstration against the embassy. And you, Carlos, you did not know of it, you see? They do not tell you everything, your communist bosses. They only use you. Elisa, be quiet. Theft and murder are no way to help anybody, Sadalo. Please. You are ordered to publish something. You are not even told what it is. A demonstration is ordered, and you have to learn it from these ruffians outside. Carlos, before it is too late, Wait. you... Wait. I will do this. I will permit the sergeant to wait here with me until the messenger comes. I will find out if your story of murder is true. If not... That's fair enough, Sadalo. I will wait, too. No, Elisa. You will go now. Whatever is to happen tonight, I do not want you as a witness. The sergeant's been gone some time, Colonel. Got a tricky job. Colonel. Huh? Now look there, across the square. Those men? You see them? Small groups of four and five in the shadows. I don't like it. Might be a demonstration in the making. I'll let the police know. No, no, Colonel. It doesn't help our side to be yelling for the police. Let's wait and take our chances. <laughs> Sadalo? Yes? Whatever happens, I hope there's no violence. <laughs> you are afraid? No. But violence solves nothing. What happens to you and to me is not important. We live at a crisis in history. If you die more or less, it is the future that is important. That's one difference between us and you fellows, Sadalo. We care about human life not only in the future, but now. Sergeant, what you do not understand... Uh, I waste breath. Your back door, Sadalo. Yes, yes, I hear. Thank you, sir. Adios. Well, at last, it is the document. I'll read this. Better hurry, Sadalo. Your men are getting impatient. Sergeant, is this the true directive? Looks like it. No, this first paragraph. The agreement to eliminate a communist apparatus at the northern naval base. It states here, the apparatus has been found ready to destroy the base entirely. Is that true? Didn't you know about it? I... Wait, I read more. You are only 46 men in the military mission? That's all. We were told over 500. Who told you? A and this later paragraph. The United States military mission will leave the host nation at the simple request of the government. All expenses of the mission are borne by the mission itself. If we're not wanted, we don't stay. Clear enough? Sadalo, just a moment. Huh? On the back of the paper here. See this stain? Yes, a blood stain, isn't it? Maybe caused by our man trying to get it back from the thief after he was stabbed. Sadalo, do you believe now there was a murder? Elisa, she told me of murders, of violence, death. I took it all to be lies. I saw nothing of it. They didn't tell you. Why not? I believe in the cause. The world must be cured of its sickness. Lenin told us how. But why did they not tell me the truth? They never do. I believed we printed only the truth. I believe only in the truth, not in lies, not in death. You told me before that our deaths weren't important. They are not. Not if we die for the truth. But, but, Sergeant, Sergeant, I do not wish to die for a lie. To fight lies, one must live. Here's I have done you and your people an injustice. Your men outside, Sadalo. I was forgetting them. Sergeant, if I was fooled, they must have been fooled too. They and lots of others. They have been made to believe you are our enemies. I see from this paper you are not. They have been told that lies are the truth and that the truth is a lie. As I was told that. Here, take your document and go. You come with me. No, no. I have helped to deceive these men, Sergeant. I have a debt to them. But you must go. And you must tell Elisa I was a fool, as she said. A fool that faces up to his mistakes. He's a man, Sadalo. Please go. Now. <laughs> Amigos, amigos, escuchenme. Amigos, friends, I call you comrades no more, but friends. There must be no demonstration, no violence. I have just seen a document. It proves that our leaders lie to us. They tell us the Americans are the enemies of our country, but this document proves the contrary. You understand? The Americans are our true friends. It is the communists everywhere who are our real enemies. Hey, 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 hey,
Carlos Cadiz! I say the truth, Fernando. The communists trick us with fine-sounding words, but they use us only to lie. I have learned the beginnings of truth. I say it to you from my heart. Let us be true to ourselves and to our country, not to Moscow. No, no. I am not a traitor. I don't want to... Sun comes up. Uh, you see there, Colonel, yeah. across the square. Those men are gone. Yes, sir, you're right. Can you not telephone? Learn something, gentlemen. Hello, at the gate. Sergeant Martin. Alone. Glad to see you back aboard, son. Well, Sergeant? The directive, sir. Ah, good work, my boy. Oh, it's a relief. Sergeant. Carlos read it, Lisa. Suddenly, everything you'd ever told him had began to make sense. Plus, reading this. He saw he'd been badly fooled. Then he decided to talk to the men outside, the demonstrators. Oh. From back of his office, I heard what happened. After they left, I found him. Elisa, he didn't die for nothing. The murder of Jose woke him up. Maybe his murder will wake up others. Thank you, Sergeant. A good job, Sergeant. Thank you, sir. Mm, bird singing. One more day of peace. Sergeant Martin's mission, starting dangerously, ended safely. In famous places, in remote places, American military men are doing the exciting work of aiding our friends helping to prevent war, helping to build true peace. Young men, when you volunteer for service in the United States Army today, you can rest assured that your best talents and your natural skills will be considered in giving you an assignment to your liking. Yes, today's modern army fits the right men to the right jobs, and real merit is recognized with faster promotions and more opportunities. Now more than ever before, men with above-average ability are finding better jobs and more important assignments in the United States Army. Why not investigate an army enlistment for yourself today and find out just what you stand to gain? Full information is available at your nearest United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this station. Proudly We Hail is produced by the Recruiting Publicity Center for the United States Army and United States Air Force Recruiting Service. This is Kenneth Banghart speaking and inviting you to tune in the same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail. <laughs>